some of us may have wondered, what happens after we die? Is there really life after death? My guest today had a near-death experience and he had some answers to share with us. Do join me to welcome Reverend Clem Emekene, Senior Pastor of the Glory Reign Assembly in Port Harcourt. Pastor Clem, welcome to Colors of Light. Thank you so much for this opportunity. I've read your story. I know it and it's really touched me and I think that other people deserve to hear this sort of testimony. Um, before we go into the accident that led to your experience, out of body experience, tell us, give us a background on yourself. How did you become a Christian? Perhaps before I will tell you about myself, let me put this up front that the experience we're about to discuss has more than anything else uh, established very concretely in my heart and in my life the fact that there is more to this life. By that I mean there is life after life, life after death, if you like. Yes. Um, before I've read it, I've heard about it. It's one of the cardinal teachings of scriptures you know, which I've also been privileged to teach of for many years. Of course, as a pastor. Yes. But then, now I have experienced it. So beyond what I read, beyond what I knew, beyond, beyond what, what I've taught, yes. now it's an experience. It's a knowledge that is with me. It's more like day and night thing. So I know that for a fact, you know, there is life after this life. There's more to this life. So let me put it at that. Okay. And then, um, like you said, my name is Reverend Clement Mekene. I'm the senior pastor of Glory and Assembly. I've been a Christian for close to four decades. Or okay. a, a little more than four decades, actually. Okay. All right. I got born into a family that you would describe as um, a nominal Christian family. Uh, Catholic, where, precisely. Catholic, you know, nominal Catholic uh, family. Yeah. Yeah, we're Christians just because we have our leaning and identification with the Catholic Church. But like I mentioned to you earlier on, my dad was not a church person, okay? It was my mom. Uh, but then she went only once in a while, you know. But at some point in my life, I was privileged to meet this woman who is an elderly woman who belongs to Christ Apostolic Church. And she took an unusual interest in me and wanted me to learn how to fast. I didn't know whatever all of that was all about. You know, she just met me one day and said, Clem, I want you to fast. Tomorrow you are going to fast. You will not eat food. And it sounded so strange. And how old were you? I was just um, 12, going to be 13 okay. Okay, at the time. Where I respect her because, you know, she was a mother figure that we had at that time. I was living away from my parents. And then she was like the covering that we had. And then I respected her, so I did. I didn't know whatever all of that was, but at about 12 o'clock, she also got me to break the fast. So that was my first experience, my first initiation into Christianity. Okay. Now that, you know, uh, same period of time, I visited a cousin of mine, an elder, an older cousin, who was living at the time in Ibadan. And then I took ill, became very, very ill. You know, I had this fever that was very, very severe. And he gave me two options. He said he could get me medication, but that there's this Jesus who heals. The little experience or the faint idea I had about Jesus was more like the crucifix, okay. you know, that we carry. Okay. I didn't know up until that point that Jesus was a person, a real person who actually lived and walked the streets of this world. Okay. I didn't know up until that time. Okay. So he told me about Jesus and that he will heal me if I would just allow him. So of course, I didn't want injection. I didn't want tablets. So I made the choice for the Jesus to come and heal me. And then himself and a few other brethren, they surrounded me, prayed for me. They spent about 30 to 40 minutes praying for me. At the end of the prayer, something just overwhelmed me. I became immediately healed and sweating, and I got just very okay. So that was the first experience of 
Christ that I had. But okay. whether he said anything about born again to me at that time, I can't remember sincerely. There was no registration of anything like that in my own mind. So when did you get born again? Okay. Years later, you know, my immediate older sister, my elder sister, she was working and living in Akure at the time. She took me to their church, Gospel Faith Mission. Again, I had some brush with Christianity, but I actually gave my life to Christ formally in 1976 in Benin, you know, under uh, Archbishop Benson Idahosa of okay. Blessed Memory. Okay. That's church where of God Mission. Church of God Mission then. Okay. And I became a member of that church. Yeah. You know, but again, I wasn't very steady in my faith until 1979, you know, when I visited another of my cousin and he took me to Gospel Faith, I mean, uh, Foursquare Gospel Church, Gospel, uh, Foursquare Gospel Church. That Foursquare Gospel Church made an indelible mark in my life. We had gone to church on that Sunday and then the man who preached to one elderly man, he just moved like extra my entire life. And I was wondering how this man knew me. I mean, this, it was a fairly large church, maybe up to a thousand persons in that church. And everything he was saying seemed to Just, just about to me. You. Okay. Speaking about me, talking about the things I was doing, things I, you know, I was into at that age and at that time. Okay. I felt very touched. Where well, first I was angry with my brother, my cousin who took me there. I was wondering why he would tell the pastor that I was bringing his brother to this church. And then the man was not preaching about me. But when he made an altar call, you know, I find myself responding to the altar call. And then I rededicate my, rededicated my life to Christ. But something very significant happened that same night. When we left church back home in the night, I just had a very strong burden in my heart that I must quit the life of sin and the life of hypocrisy. Now that I'm, I claim to be a Christian, I must be a Christian for real. And I was just praying. I slept off, but I now had a vision. God opened my eyes in that dream, and I saw hell. And you I saw, saw that. Hell. Yes, saw hell. Saw people shouting, crying, screaming. I saw the worms in hell. You know, that was 1979. I was about 18 years old, going to 19 years that time. And so I started pleading with God that, please, I would like to straighten out every detail of my life so that I can serve you with all my heart, if only you just take away this body of sin from my life. And it was like somebody took a heavy load off my shoulders, and I felt the peace of God come into my heart. So I rededicated my life to Christ. And in that same church, we were taught about the Holy Ghost baptism. You know, for two weeks, we went through classes, and then eventually they lay hands on us, and I got filled with the Holy Spirit, you know, that same period. And I was in secondary school at the time. Now, once I went back to school, I joined the scripture union and my life took a complete turn. You know, back in the village, I was known to be one of the big boys in town, one of the rascal boys in town. I had a, a gang of about uh, 11 of us, you know, that were harassed girls, uh, you know, do all those bad things that boys of those days used to do. You know, but as soon as I got back home, announced to them that I'm not a changed person. They didn't believe at the time. And one of my friends came to me and said, I'm giving you three months claim. I know you. If you can stay away from girls and stay away from, you know, telling lies and all of that, I will know that this, your claim is real. Where? This is how many years <laughs> later? Some 40? Oh, some 40 years, you know, plus, there about. And you're still years, with I'm this still, Jesus. You know, doing, uh, going stronger by God's grace. So that was the first major encounter that I had in my journey as a Christian. Mm -hmm. Then a little further, um, when I was in the university, you know, when I did my first degree in the College of Education, Abraka then, on the University of Benin, you know, we're university students, but uh, in Abraka campus, I got very committed to the CU, Christian Union uh, Fellowship on campus. And I became the Bible study secretary. So we went for a series of training on how to draft Bible studies. So that was a pastor in the making. In the making. <laughs> we'll take know. a break okay. now. When we come back, we'll talk about that accident that led to a journey out of this world that brought us to have this conversation. Okay. 
Thank you. This is the Colors of Life show. We are discussing with uh, Reverend Clem Emekene from the Glory Reign Assembly in Port Harcourt. When we come back, we're going to talk about his experience of life after this life. You don't want to miss this. My guest with me today, Reverend Clem Emekene, has had two out-of-body experiences, and he has a story to share with us on what happens when we leave this world. So join me to welcome again, Reverend Clem Emekene. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Okay, One so you, you, you did give us a background, but we're now fast forward into two years ago okay. when you took a trip with your family around Christmas. December 2018, what happened? It happened precisely on the 29th of December 2018. Uh, that morning, okay, first my daughter, uh, we're blessed, my wife and I were blessed with three children, two boys and a girl. The girl is in the middle. She's the second child that we have. Now she's married. So at the time she had come to, she had come back to us in Port Harcourt with a husband to be. And I felt I needed to honor my dad. My dad is still alive, I'm still alive even now. He's 98 years old, going to be 99. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I thought I should take my daughter and her husband to be to see my dad, you know, and to also see my mom. Now, my mom lives in Worry, but my dad lives in the village. Okay, my, my mom is a little bit free, so she's staying with my elder sisters. Okay, so we took a trip that morning to Delta State, where to visit our village in Isoko, and then from there proceed to Wari. You know, so we see my dad in the village, and then we see my mom in Wari, and my sisters, and then come back to Port the same day. That was the plan. And because it was going to be a day trip, um, we wanted to leave very early. In fact, my intention was we leave by 5.30 a.m. You know, but by 6, we were ready. And my PA, who also drives me, was not around, unlike him. He didn't come on time. By 7 o'clock, he was nowhere to be found. And um, my two younger brothers were with me. And both of them could drive very well. So I asked one of them to drive and so that we can quickly go, go ahead and make the trip. So we left. You know, I was already very worked up, feeling very angry that he knows me and my time. And, you know. But unlike me, I should have put a cut through to him, but I didn't do that. Anyway, we made a trip. And then secondly, the guy who drove, my younger brother who drove, was, I can say that he was a bit reckless. In his driving. In his driving. But remember, you were, how many of you were in the car? We were eight of us in number. My wife was there and uh, my daughter, husband-to-be, then... The, my two younger brother, the one driving and the one with him. And we, we had two little Young. nephews of ours with That's us. Right, one, one is my, my nephew and my wife's nephew. And this was a minibus that would usually sit how many people? We usually sit um, 14, 14, passen 14 passengers. Yes, yeah, 14 so your seater. brother was driving recklessly. Yeah, well, then what happened? Now, I was driving, but I didn't caution him, okay. unlike me. Okay. I felt, well, speed, okay, we'll make the trip and we'll soon be back to port. So where we drove home successfully, we got to my village. We saw my dad, saw my relations. We introduced um, our in-law to them. And then we left. We left Elu at about 1.30 p.m. to go to Wari. Now, as we're going to Wari, now again, let me back a little bit, back up a little bit. When we're coming from Wari, my, myself and my daughter, we're having this very beautiful conversation, you know, I, I kept showing her different land, you know, landmarks on the way, you know, River Non, and then River Niger, you know, Patani, uh, Erini, and, you know, everywhere as we're coming. So when we left home to go to Wari, you know, as we're passing Agbaru, I was telling her that in Agbaru here, I have a classmate who pastors a church in that same town. Told her about my, the, one of the leaders of our church who comes from that place. Shortly after that, we passed 
the Ethiop River. We crossed the bridge. And then I said, I told her that this is River Ethiop. Now, that was the last thing I can recall that I said to her consciously. But all of a sudden, there was a switch. There was a change of scene for me. Okay. Okay. I didn't know that something had happened. Now, I, I suddenly noticed that I'm now in a different vehicle. This time around, you know, a more compact, but very cozy and very comfortable, you know, like a mini Airbus, right? And the top of it, you know, was glass work. So you could see, you could, you could have a beautiful area view of the entire scene. All right, and it appears like the, the, the small aircraft was flying itself. It was an autopilot. Although there was a second passenger with me. This time around, we were only two in this uh, vehicle. vehicle. Yeah. yeah. There was a guy sitting in front, you know, was dressed in this beautiful white, you know, suit. And um, although I didn't see his face exactly, okay. but he appears to be somebody very familiar to me. Okay. All right. We're having conversation. So like just we, yourself and the person who was driving. He wasn't even driving. Okay. The, 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 the vehicle, vehicle was, was on autopilot. On not autopilot. Yeah. But he was sitting in front of me yeah. and I was sitting behind him. Okay. And we're having a conversation as if we knew ourselves very well. Okay. And then he said to me in a very loud voice, Pastor Clem, turn to your left and look. So I did. And I noticed that there was this wide you know, Broadway, you know, Tad Broadway, wearing black coat, you know, kind of, and then going towards the valley, all right? So I looked towards the, toward, I mean, looked to that road, and he said, if you look further, you will see the gate of hell. And I saw the gate, you know, uh, you know very wide gate like that. But on the other side of the gate, which is a valley, you can see these flames, Coming up from time to time, you know, we just come up Rising. like that, rise up like that. Okay. okay. And I need to go back. And I recall to mind the vision I saw earlier on, you know, when I was much younger. Okay. And the, the day I really dedicated, rededicated my life to Christ in 1979. I recall that vision. When you saw hell. When I saw hell the first time. Okay. So this time around again, I saw this. And this one was not a vision for me. The, this experience I'm talking about now. It was so real, like, you know, I left the world and then we're moving somewhere. And then we, we kept flying and beneath us is this large expanse of lagoon like, you know, body of water. And uh, so after I saw her, I mean, I was like, OK, so this must be out of the water. So at that time, I knew that we're already out of the, the normal world, the regular world. We're going somewhere. So the only thing that came to my mind at that point was, I need Jesus to be with me right now. So I asked the guy that was in the aircraft with me, I said, where exactly are we going to from here? He said, we're heading straight to the gate of heaven. Oh, I was, I was overjoyed that finally, heaven, here I come. Then I said, I said, I'm excited at the thought of heaven, but that you know my teaching. So it will appear that the person knows my that Now recalling now, I think that's like my angel, okay. you know, meaning to me and which I believe every person, every believer has angelic company, whether they know it or they don't know it, but that's the fact of scripture anyway. So this person I want to believe is my angel who works with me on a daily basis. All right. And then I, so I said, you know, my teachings about heaven, the heaven is a wonderful place. Yes. And I'm, a, I'm, I'm excited at the thought of heaven. But what will make meaning to me is, is Jesus there? When we get to the gate of heaven, are we going to meet Jesus? And he said, for sure, you will see Jesus very shortly. So I, I, I'm asking because anywhere Jesus is, is where I want to be. You know, if he's in the air, I want to be with him. Just anywhere. If he's in, in you know, the, 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 the gates, I mean, the pearl streets of heaven, I want to be where, wherever he is, because Jesus is the one that I know, and he is the key to heaven. And he said to me, don't worry, you will see Jesus shortly. And we were supposed to be flying towards the gate of heaven. The next thing I saw was, I found myself in a room. I was on a bed, and uh, somebody was sitting just beside the bed, attending to me, you know. 
uh, I think it was mopping my body, you know, with something. And then he said to me, oh, guy, just calm down. So I'm like, who are you? He said, oh, just calm down. So I said, where are we? He said, just calm down. Said, You're getting me, where, what are we doing here? At that point, my younger brother walked in and I recognized him, the one who drove. You know, I call him Uncle John, and that's my pet name for him. And you realized that you were now back in this world. In this world. I was, first of all, I was disappointed. I mean, I'm looking forward to seeing Jesus. the beautiful, yes, and then inside this small room. You know. We'll take a break now. Okay. When we come back, I know you've said to me that your life has changed since that experience. Completely. So we'll talk about that. Stay with us for the concluding part of this amazing testimony. We'll take a break now. My guest today, Reverend Clem Emekene, was in a car accident in December 2018 that left him in a coma for three hours. During that time, he traveled with an angel. He believes he traveled um, with an angel. He's going to tell us then what happened when he gained consciousness, what exactly happened and how that incident has changed his life forever. Reverend Clem, so fast forward, we're in the hospital room because your church, your family we're had been praying, praying the yeah. church had been praying, it mobilized yeah. prayer. So when you got up, then you heard exactly what happened. Now, again, when I tell this story, I feel very, very humbled because God gave me a chance to live again. Okay. I was not supposed to live again, but God just gave me a chance to come back, to tell my story, okay. and thank God for this opportunity. So now, I found myself in the hospital room, and one by one, I started seeing my family members, you know, my elder sisters, I have four elder sisters, uh, they themselves and their husbands, some of their children also, you know, in the company. They were all praying, you know, and then, our church in Port Harcourt were already praying, mobilized and praying for us. So apparently there was an accident. Okay. I, didn't, I didn't see, I wasn't, I wasn't sleeping while inside the bus. Okay. I was having a conversation with my daughter and I stepped from that conversation into another realm. But over here, there was an accident. Okay. Now, in the bus, my daughter and her husband, they were sitting, you know, behind me. I was sitting there front. My wife was in the next row in my front and then our you know, small children, the, our nephews, they were sitting in just be behind so the drivers. Four rows. Four rows. Yeah. So in the front, my brothers were there. So now from what they told me, now the person driving, he said he slept off and he was on top speed. Okay. So he veered off the road, hit a stationary uh, pickup van, and then the vehicle tumbled, eventually landed on top of a uh, there's a dump of uh, gravels, you know, that's where eventually ended up in. But then in the process of tumbling, you know, several times like that, the bus flung me out okay. and eventually landed on my top. All right. And the villagers who, you know, were around, they came, rushed down to the, to the scene and lifted the bus to bring me out of the bus. So they brought me out of the, uh, out from under the bus, brought me out, took me in the Kekena Pep, straight to the hospital. All of that sincerely... That's like a mini vehicle. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the three-wheel... The three-wheel vehicle. We call it Nigeria, Kekena Pep. Yeah. Okay, so that vehicle took me, that, you know, took me to the hospital. I have no... Rec up till date, have no recollection of any of all of that. And yet, in this accident, your wife's ear My was... Was slashed off. Yeah. My son-in-law had two surgeries. All right. My brother, one of... Uh, my, the one sitting near the driver, he had two surgeries all right in fact yesterday just this yesterday he and was this in is hospital. two years and this two years after he's still well, being he's treated still, still being treated yeah. for the you know for that situation mm. but here i was they picked me from under the bus no fractures in my body no bone was broken and then they took me to the hospital and they said for three hours the medical personnel were there battling to revive me so at that time, I came back to consciousness. I just awoken back to consciousness. When you saw people around when I saw you. People around I know me. you've said to me that your life cannot be the same again. So what has changed? Because 
by the time this happened, you'd been pastoring for almost 30 years. Mm -hmm. So what is, who is the new Pastor Clem post that experience? Today, I'm a lot calmer, you know, and then I'm more reflective. And um, nothing, it, there's nothing to hold on so dearly in this life other than Jesus. If you don't have Jesus, you don't have life, you don't have hope, all right? Things like offenses, you know, things like somebody got me walked up and mad. You can hardly find that with me now because I know that God gave me a chance, you know, to not only just make up my life, but to spend every moment of my life preparing for that life after. Because the truth is, there is life after this life. Amazing. And, and, and the, the major thing is, if you have Jesus, then you have the key to that life. If you don't have Jesus, I'm sorry to say, your good works will not end you, you know, the ticket to pass through the gate of heaven, into heaven. And I know you said there were promptings along the way. You feel that that accident didn't need to happen and that God was, you know, trying to speak to you, prompt you because you were uncomfortable. Can you briefly, we have like a minute left, tell us about that. It's, it's a dangerous thing to hold on to your plan and always insist my way. You know that prayer that Jesus prayed, let your will be done. We need to pray that prayer daily over everything. It's good to have your plans and take your plans to the Lord, but at the end of the day, let it be God's will. And if you're a very reflective person and sensitive, you will notice the promptings of the Lord. I, they mean, there were a number of signs. Because you did say that you, you were bent on going I, I was coming bent back on that making day. that trip. You were in a hurry. Yes. So when it. your driver your didn't show VA. up, all I needed to do was to call him. And, and then he had an, uh, 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 they had arm robbery in their, in their company that night, which should even draw my passion. All right. So you may not have traveled. I may that not day. have traveled that day. And then, of course, the driver was driving very fast. Very and fast, you didn't reckless, and I didn't caution him, unlike me also. You know, so there were a number of signs that if I had responded to just any one of them, this equation would have played out differently. But God still used but God it for still, good. You know the scripture that says that all things work together for good, for good to, to them, them that love God. God. Reverend oh, Clem. No, God is, <laughs> We've this run is just out God. Time, but yes, my God. Your testimony has... Um, really had a profound impact on my life and I'm sure that people watching will be touched as well. It would answer so many questions. Thank you so much Thank for God. coming to be with us on this program. Thank you. So we've come to the end of this edition of the Colors of Life show where we've heard the incredible testimony of Reverend Clem Emekene's out of body experience. Details of that testimony are in a book titled See What the Lord Has Done where I've put together a compilation of stories of God at work today. This is the Colors of Life show. Remember to follow us on social media, like us and share this video. Here we seek to know Christ and to make Christ known.